Hi, I'm Yami Chinsomi. I'm the lead journalist with HRM Asia, and I'm joined today by Melissa Key, the chief HR officer of Quark Singapore Group, which is one of Asia's most dynamic multinational conglomerates, and also Melanie Sharp Ensir, who is Microsoft HR lead, services HR lead for Asia, and she's got more than 10 years of experience working with business clients. Welcome to you both. Thank you for joining us. Today, we'll be discussing innovations in HR and how technology has been advancing transformation in the talent function. So, Melissa, you've been in the HR world for 25 years now, so you've probably seen a whole lot of changes in the landscape. Maybe you could talk us through the big ones from your perspective. Well, a lot have changed. Uh, my 25 years, I remember, you know, I started with financial industry, then I went to high-tech industry, then chemical, healthcare, and now with the Asian conglomerate. Um, to me, there are three parts that uh, I, you know, I will respond to that. First is what happened in the past, mm -hmm. what happened now, and what will likely happen in the future. So when I look at HR in the past, the function is seen as a back-end function, uh, providing administrative uh, support, mainly supporting role, focusing on compliance to labor laws, and uh, more reactive in terms of uh, the role we play in uh, supporting the business. And then with a lot of globalization, uh, a lot of MNC expand their focus globally, that has also add, provided added push to many companies in a lot of countries to, uh, to look into how we better utilize technology. And I've seen improvements in terms of process systems, uh, and how we continue to improve the workforce management. Fast forward to now, um, I see HR role as a business partner. It's important because how we continue to add value to the business is first and foremost, we need to understand what the business is all about, what is trying to achieve the impact, the vision, and how we're gonna get there is with the people. Therefore, as HR leaders, we need to first be HR business partners. And from that perspective, add our value, not just for the current, but also for the immediate and long-term perspective. Now, thinking about the future, I see HR as an integrator, as a connector, as an enabler, and more importantly, one that be able to look into the future, sort of a futurist, right? The eternal uh, optimist to really rally the organization forward. Therefore, we play a, a, a multiple roles here yeah, where we need to not just be good in engaging the workforce, but we need to be able to anticipate the needs of the organization in the future and prepare the workforce for the future. I mean, I definitely agree with you about that yeah. movement from being a transactional function to more maybe uh, value adding. Um, you know, especially as technology can start taking away some of the lower level tasks. And actually, you know, talking about the workplace of the future, it gets me thinking about the disconnect that maybe we feel between our consumer lives and our employee lives. You know, once we step into the office, it's like we, we, we go back in time, you know, it's back in the 1990s. It's, we're not no longer, you know, on sleek interfaces. And I mean, that's not necessarily true, but actually, Melanie, maybe you can sort of weigh in on the sort of latest HR and technology innovations that are out there because mm. especially when you've got Generation Z entering the workforce, you know, they barely remember a time before smartphones and Wi-Fi. So what can organizations do? How can they leverage these new technologies and innovations to you know, not alienate the, these um, employees? Absolutely. I mean, first and foremost at Microsoft, we've been on a journey on diversity and inclusion. So we are really trying to bring together all of our, our workforce. So whether that's our millennials and, and Gen Z who are very adept at mobile technology and aren't afraid of uh, artificial intelligence to maybe some of our, our more veteran workers, we're really trying to bring all of that together. And so one of the ways that we really uh, uh, leverage that is through our SharePoint technology where we drive a lot of our employees for self-service so that they, they can work and, and help themselves there. But everything's also available on their mobile devices. We have a lot of social platforms that they can leverage as well. So Yammer is one place where they can post about what they're working on, what they're doing, where they're traveling to at one of the many Microsoft offices across the world. We also, uh, in order to enable some of that travel, we've implemented a bot onto our, uh, our uh, HR platform 
where in, uh, before, when somebody was going to travel to a new country, if they needed a visa immigration letter, they would have to go and look up where the HR partner, who the HR partner was, where they sat, send an email, wait several days in order to get the visa application letter back. And it would take oftentimes days and weeks. We implemented the bot. They go straight there. They put in the request. And within just a 24-hour turnaround, they have the letter back. It's been such an enabler for them. They're used to getting things done in real time. And it's given so much time back to the HR business partner. They can now go back to the, the work that really matters, right? Yes. And, and is more strategic yeah. versus these kind of transactional engagements yeah. that used to bog down our organization. Mm. So we're really trying to integrate as much technology as we can through all of our platforms to help enable our employees. So whether they're on the go or in front of their, their mm. desk. I mean, the bot sounds great, actually, but I can sort of tie that back to some of the more cynical doom and gloom forecasts I've been seeing about, you know, new disruptive technologies, you know, like, oh, Southeast Asia is going to lose millions of jobs in the next 10 years because of, you know, bots and things like that. On the other hand, you know, I, I, I see what you're saying because it's, it's freeing us up to do higher level stuff. So, and I've seen forecasts that say, hey, we're going to have another million jobs in Southeast Asia by 2025 because of all these higher level tasks that need to be done. So it seems to me there are going to be jobs. They're just going to be different jobs. Um, so I'm kind of wondering how can we as business leaders, as HR leaders, as organizations, how can we help our employees you know, keep up with these new different jobs, but also um, you know, have that continuous learning mindset to be agile enough to be able to keep up with these changes? Mm -hmm. If either of you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, let, let me tackle the first one. How do we continue to prepare the workforce so we do not become obsolete? Right. And to me, that's something that's key to our people vision in Port Singapore because uh, we recognize that we need to change, we need to transform ourselves, we need to continue to move along and move faster. And uh, for us, you know, the focus has been not just to strengthen the competencies, but also more importantly to prepare the mindset for change and what we call the growth mindset. And uh, that our employees understand that challenges are okay as long as we learn from it. Uh, you know, and also we need to encourage people to learn from successes from others and be inspired by that. And also feedback is food for champions. And, and I think these are things that we are trying to instill in our workforce that we can continue to leverage on each other to learn from one another and from others so that we can continue to move ahead. Now, why is it important? Because in the digital world that we're talking about, in the industrial revolution that we talk about, 4.0, what's important is that there are changes in all dimensions. In my view, no one person can be the expert. Therefore, it's important that as employer, we learn from one another whether it's from outside or inside. We build partners in communities of uh, practice that can help enable us to get there. Now, what are we trying to do when we do all this is to really build an edge on workforce because the world of the future is not something we can define in one sentence. Therefore, our focus is in building an edge on workforce. And what do I mean by agile? It really literally stands for agility, growth mindset, innovative, we need to have leaders of the future, and an engaged workforce, which basically comes back to people. Mm. Yeah, because people is really the heart of the organization. And with that, we will be able to move along and, and face whatever that comes together and continue to add value to our customers. I mean, yeah. what you're saying, it really sounds like Take tackling it as a mentality and a mindset and not just one specific skill that has to be, you know, acquired. Yes. And Melanie, would you agree that that's how you see it? Absolutely. I, I truly believe that this growth mindset culture and the culture work is the most pivotal thing that, that HR and business leaders can focus on as they're implementing a digital transformation in their organization. Yeah. Just going back to the point of uh, continuous learning, one of the things that, that we've really focused on is making sure that our leaders are role modeling the, the mm. kind of continuous learning we're also expecting from our workforce. So yeah. even earlier this week, our head of uh, global HR sent an email out to 
you know, a thousand HR employees saying, this is how I'm actually blocking the time in my, in my diary to spend the time on a MOOC. So this is a, a massive open online course and we have them on offer through, through our Microsoft learning platform and really focusing uh, his time and his attention and blocking out his days and role modeling the, the mm. kind of continuous learner mindset and, yes. and actions that are really going to be necessary for all of us to keep up with the pace of change. Yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, it really sounds like I think, you know, um, setting the example is really yeah. going to be crucial to this. So I guess on that note, maybe each of you could share a parting thought about HR's continuing role in enabling and sort of pushing trans and driving transformation, really. Well, for me, we have to be the eternal optimist. Uh, my, my view is that as HR, we should be ready to be a change agent you know, and more importantly, continue to focus on preparing the workforce for the future and agile workforce is key. And also remember that we cannot do this alone. So leverage on the partners out there uh, to help us enable that. And more importantly is not to stay in our comfort zone. The way to add value is to move forward. Move forward with times, move forward with technology, move forward with the opportunities that are available. It can be daunting, but to me, managing change is part and parcel of our, our lives too. How we deal with digital change around our personal lives. So to me, my encouragement to my leaders and employees is that if you can do it at home, you can do it at work for sure. Yes, that's great. Yeah. I mean, change is not going to go away. So, yes. you know, it's a get on board or just not be around. Yeah. <laughs> and I think our, one of the key roles that we can play yeah. is encouraging our leaders and employees to, to, to really understand how difficult change is. And us having empathy for the experience and really being able to relate to, yeah. to one another in an authentic, open way yes. is hugely important. So we're really focused on our leader education and manager education around creating psychological safety and trusting teams. It's only there where you can bring out that inclusive mm -hmm. environment and truly allow people to process uh, uh, thoughtfully mm -hmm. about the change that they're going through because everyone is going to be at a different point yes. in their own change uh, journey. So the more empathy that we can yes. have towards one another uh, yes. will foster that inclusive environment. I think that's a really lovely and fantastic note to sort of end things on, you know, sort of keeping the human in HR, yes. even as technology is sort of taking over the future of work, you know, we've got to remember that that's what we're here for, right? Yes. So I guess on that note, I want to thank you both very much for joining us today. And also thank you to everyone across Southeast Asia who's been watching us. Uh, have a great day ahead. Thank you. My name is Artie Thapa, and I lead customer success for our talent solutions business here at LinkedIn. I'd like to spend the next 10 minutes talking to you about the top trends that we as leaders need to keep abreast of as we look to transform our organizations and build the workforce of the future. I feel very humbled and proud to work for an organization that has a vision to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. To realize our vision, we rely on our unique data platform called the Economic Graph. The Economic Graph is a digital representation of the global economy based on over 600 million members, 50,000 skills, 30 million companies, 20 million open jobs, and 84,000 schools. Through mapping every member, every company, every job, and every school, we're able to spot trends like talent migration, hiring rates, and in-demand skills by region. These insights help us connect people to economic opportunity in new ways. Using LinkedIn's economic graph data, today I want to share two important trends that are transforming the global workforce. We believe these trends are going to change the way you work, the way you build teams, the way you make decisions, and the way you future-proof your business for success. The first trend is the impact of AI and automation on the evolution and emergence of jobs. We've seen numerous reports on how the rise of AI and workplace automation has the potential to drastically change the future of work and make some jobs obsolete. Past experience tells us that while some jobs become obsolete, new jobs are created and existing jobs also evolve. The question I want to pose to you is, 
Do you have a sense of what your future organization will look like as a result of AI and automation? How are you thinking about evolving your workforce through this transformation? Let's first talk about the evolution of existing roles. According to the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report, with the advancement of AI and robotics, it is estimated that machine task hours will rise from 29% to 42% five years from now. This means that 42% of the repetitive administrative work that your employees do will be automated. Why is this important? Because automation will enable your employees to focus on solving more complex issues. Take telesales as an example. Today, there are bots already available in the market that can immediately respond to large volumes of customer queries, leaving time for your sales force to deal with more strategic deals and projects. We've also seen that traditional roles are evolving into new hybrids before our eyes. More and more, we see that companies are hiring people who can do multiple roles. Take data scientists in Singapore, a classic example of a hybrid role. Not only do data scientists need to know their way around data, they also need to have strong communication and stakeholder management skills to relay the analysis back to business stakeholders. This is another example of the evolution of a role to have multifaceted skills. What does this mean for you as a leader? As automation increases, you will need to hire differently and grow a new set of skills amongst current role holders. This is also going to require a cultural transformation where learning new skills and adapting to role changes becomes a part of the DNA of your organization and your employees. It is not only existing jobs that will evolve, new jobs are emerging more rapidly than at any other time in modern history. Jobs that sounded obscure a few years back, like customer success managers, are becoming commonplace today. In fact, based on LinkedIn data, we've seen a 10x growth in customer success managers in Australia in the last five years. I myself have had a non-traditional career path, having worked across numerous countries and functions, from HR to management consulting, internal comms, talent management, and now customer success. Starting my career as an HR officer nearly 20 years ago, I would never have predicted that I would today be leading a customer success function. To be honest, I hadn't even heard of customer success a few years ago. What's been important to me in navigating my career with agility is having a growth mindset and developing transferable skills. As a consequence of new jobs emerging, you will need to consider how you are building agile organizational structures to bring these new roles into organizations and carefully consider the strategy for hiring or growing talent into these new roles. This means that you should be thinking about hiring for tomorrow rather than hiring for today and creating platforms for learning and opportunities for employees to upskill themselves. The second important trend that I want to talk about today is the rise of soft skills. With every business today being a digital business in some way, shape or form, there's a pressing need for hard skills that are technology related. However, did you know that the number one skills gap we are actually seeing in Asia Pacific is related to soft skills? While the shelf life of many hard skills are shrinking, soft skills stay relevant for far longer. A particular programming language may go out of fashion, but creativity, adaptability, collaboration, and leadership skills will always be valuable. These are the skills that machines can't replace. Soft skills can make or break a hire, and they can also make or break a company. 92% of talent professionals say they matter as much or more than hard skills when they hire, and the absence of soft skills limits an organization's productivity and an individual's effectiveness. What does this mean for you as a leader? When you think about building a learning and development plan for your organization with the aim of upskilling, you need to have a robust plan around building soft skills related capabilities in your workforce. The answer could be building internal programs led by the L&D team or investing in learning platforms that provide a wide range and an easy avenue for learning soft skills. These two macro trends around the evolution of jobs and the emergence of soft skills bring up natural questions about the future of the organization. These questions need to be answered today 
in order for you to be ready for what lies ahead tomorrow. If you're a recruiting leader, you'll want to know, how do I hire for jobs that did not exist five years ago? If you're an L&D leader, you'll be asking, how can I predict and get ahead of where the skills gaps in my workforce will be? How do I upskill and reskill my existing workforce to rise to the challenge? If you're a CHRO, you'll want to know, how do I influence business strategy by making talent a competitive advantage? These talent-related questions are not restricted only to the HR function. Today, every CHRO and every business leader is invested in building a workforce that truly drives competitive advantage for their business. As leaders, experience and instinct play a huge role in decision-making and answering some of the questions I have raised here. In addition to experience and instinct, it's becoming more and more critical to have the right data and insights in order to make better talent decisions, understand how your workforce compares to competitors and elevate your impact. Our customers have been using insights in jobs, skills and talent pools to make some very important decisions, such as where should we open our new office? How can we re reduce attrition? How do we build a gender balanced workforce? To learn more about the insights that LinkedIn can offer and how you can create a culture of data-driven thinking and decision-making, please join the LinkedIn-hosted virtual conference on the 16th of May. As I wrap up this session, there are two key messages that I want to leave you with, two areas that you can start thinking about. Firstly, what is the future vision for your business and your workforce? And secondly, is your organization equipped with the right talent and skills needed to fulfill this vision? If there's one thing that's constant in the talent landscape, it's perpetual change. As the business world in general shifts, new skills and new promising jobs are bound to fall in and out of favor. Being able to predict these trends and respond early by utilizing insights will be key to building the workforce of the future. Thank you. more likely to achieve breakthrough performance in companies that neglected culture. When our CEO Satya Nadella took over from Steve Ballmer in 2014, he envisioned a, a new mission for Microsoft. We were here to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. This became our rallying cry. We reorganized the company to reflect the new focus on customer solutions. It was Peter Drucker who first said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. A company is defined by the people who power it. You can have two companies created at the same time, in the same market, pursuing the same strategy, but they're still going to be two very different entities. And that's because it's all about the people. The people work very differently. And even if they come together in the service of something greater, they're still going to retain their own unique personalities, passions, hopes, and dreams. I like to envision this like an oyster. The conditions that surround people as they work will generate something very distinct from them, and perhaps even a pearl may emerge. While Satya said he is the chief curator of our culture, he was adamant that our employee base was engaged in our cultural evolution. So what did we do? For this first year that Satya was in his new role, his LT met every Friday for four hours. They spent time getting to know each other. What were their hopes, their fears, their dreams, their loves? Then they set out to define our culture. At the foundation of this was growth mindset, what I believe is the secret sauce to any cultural shift. Satya and the senior LT knew that we had to move from a know-it-all to a learn-it-all culture. Change takes time. This is the model that we use for our own culture change. We address each of the components, customer obsession, diversity and inclusion, one Microsoft collaboration, and making a difference with intention in an ongoing and iterative way. We also looked at activating our culture through a framework of behaviors, systems, symbols, and storytelling. We knew we had to shift mindset and get our disparate orgs collaborating and hacking together. We did away with our annual company meeting and we transformed into our one week hackathon across the world where employees come together and innovate and hack technology issues. We had to articulate and reinforce the behaviors we wanted to see that were aligned to our culture if we wanted to see that shift. 
We took a look at our systems, our organizational processes, our tools such as operating rhythms, feedback processes, listening systems, and core priorities that reinforce the culture. We shifted our performance evaluation system to assess employees' collaboration and their ability to build off the ideas of others rather than just their own personal heroics. We changed our feedback system for one of full transparency. We looked at our rewards and recognition and rituals to ensure we were reinforcing the values of what mattered most to us, environmental stewardship, diversity of language and place, growth mindset. And finally, we started to tell our story and ensure our leaders were equipped to do so as well. So employee advocacy is a key story we want to proliferate. The great working culture we create through volunteer days, diversity and inclusion programs, our teaming and collaborative spirit, we had to do a better job of telling these good news stories broadly. And we knew we needed technology to scale all of this. Over the years, we've evolved our approach to communication and have landed on three pillars that we target with consistency. When we communicate, we drive cultural awareness and engagement. We drive confidence in our leadership and our strategy, and we build pride. Our company portal, MSW, is built on SharePoint. Employees come here for company news, event information, and to access anything from a campus map to the CEO Connection Forum to submit questions for the monthly CEO Q&A, everything under the sun. The content is curated and updated daily, making sure that it's always fresh, relevant information, and there are built-in links that make it easy to share content on social and ask a question on Yammer, which has been pivotal and a great integration point for us. How do we reach 125,000 employees globally has been a challenge that we're using technology to help solve. Satya has a monthly Q&A where he engages our employees. For online viewers, there's a live Yammer feed and a real-time sentiment analysis from Bing Pulse. Folks can interact through Yammer and also share a thumbs up or thumbs down to what is being talked about. This really helps us provide a real-time transcript that's translated in multiple languages and is searchable. For people who miss it, they can go back and watch it later, and of course, you can watch it on your mobile device. The introduction of workplace analytics has also been a huge game changer for our leadership to drill into where we can focus our transformation. Harnessing the power of the Microsoft Office 365 graph, which pulls metadata on how we behave and interact with productivity technology, we're able to drill into areas like our onboarding process, what makes the most successful experience for a new employee and builds her network in the fastest, most effective way. How are our top sellers collaborating internally and with customers? What are they doing with their time? What do our top people managers do? All of this we can now see and define now thanks to workplace analytics. And the feedback we're getting from the media and the market, it's validating. It's validating what we're doing, it's working. I love this quote from Satya, which really sums up where we are today as a company. Listen, if you want to be cool, go, go look and work for someplace else. But if you want to join a company that's committed to making others cool, join Microsoft. That's what we stand for today, and I'm, I'm really excited about our journey ahead. Thank you so much for joining me on this topic, and if it gets you going, please check out our additional resources. Our 10 things we've learned about culture is my personal favorite. Thanks so much for your time today. Hi, I'm Yami Chinaswamy. I'm lead journalist with HRM Asia, and I'm joined today by Melissa Key, the chief HR officer of Quark Singapore Group, which is one of Asia's most dynamic multinational conglomerates, and also Melanie Sharp Ensir, who is Microsoft HR lead, services HR lead for Asia, and she's got more than 10 years of experience working with business clients. Welcome to you both. Thank you for joining us. Today, we'll be discussing innovations in HR and how technology has been advancing transformation in the talent function. So, Melissa, you've been in the HR world for 25 years now, so you've probably seen a whole lot of changes in the landscape. Maybe you could talk us through the big ones from your perspective. Well, a lot have changed. Uh, my 25 years, I remembered, you know, I started with financial industry, then I went to high-tech industry, then chemical, healthcare, and now with the Asian conglomerate. Um, to me, the three parts that uh, I, you know, I will respond to that. First is what happened in the past, mm -hmm. what happened now, and what will likely happen in the future. So when I look at HR in the past, the function is seen as a back-end function, uh, providing administrative uh, support, mainly supporting role, focusing on compliance, 
to labor laws and uh, more reactive in terms of uh, the role we play in uh, supporting the business. And then with a lot of globalization, uh, a lot of MNC expand the focus globally. That has also add, provided added push to many companies in a lot of countries to, uh, to look into how we better utilize technology. And I've seen improvements in terms of process systems uh, and how we continue to improve the workforce management. Fast forward to it now, um, I see HR role as a business partner. It's important because how we continue to add value to the business is first and foremost, we need to understand what the business is all about, what it's trying to achieve, the impact, the vision, and how we're going to get there is with the people. Therefore, as HR leaders, we need to first be HR business partners. And from that perspective, add our value, not just for the current, but also for the immediate and long-term perspective. Now, thinking about the future, I see HR as an integrator, as a connector, as an enabler, and more importantly, one that be able to look into the future, sort of a futurist, right? The eternal uh, optimist to really rally the organization forward. Therefore, we play a, a, a multiple roles here. Yeah? where we need to not just be good in engaging the workforce, but we need to be able to anticipate the needs of the organization in the future and prepare the workforce for the future. I mean, I definitely agree with you about that yeah. movement from being a transactional function to more maybe uh, value adding, um, you know, especially as technology can start taking away some of the lower level tasks. And actually, you know, talking about the workplace of the future, it gets me thinking about the disconnect that maybe we feel between our consumer lives and our employee lives. You know, once we step into the office, it's like we, we, we go back in time, you know, it's back in the 1990s. It's, we're not no longer, you know, on sleek interfaces. And I mean, that's not necessarily true, but actually, Melanie, maybe you can sort of weigh in on the sort of latest HR and technology innovations that are out there because mm. especially when you've got Generation Z entering the workforce, you know, they barely remember a time before smartphones and Wi-Fi. So what can organizations do? How can they leverage these new technologies and innovations to you know, not alienate the, these um, employees? Absolutely. I mean, first and foremost at Microsoft, we've been on a journey on diversity and inclusion. So we are really trying to bring together all of our, our workforce. So whether that's our millennials and, and Gen Z who are very adept at mobile technology and aren't afraid of uh, artificial intelligence to maybe some of our, our more veteran workers, we're really trying to bring all of that together. And so one of the ways that we really uh, uh, leverage that is through our SharePoint technology where we drive a lot of our employees for self-service so that they, they can work and, and help themselves there. But everything's also available on their mobile devices. We have a lot of social platforms that they can leverage as well. So Yammer is one place where they can post about what they're working on, what they're doing, where they're traveling to at one of the many Microsoft offices across the world. We also, uh, in order to enable some of that travel, we've implemented a bot onto our, uh, our uh, HR platform, where in, uh, before, when somebody was going to travel to a new country, if they needed a visa immigration letter, they would have to go and look up where the HR partner, who the HR partner was, where they sat, send an email, wait several days in order to get the visa application letter back. And it would take oftentimes days and weeks. We implemented the bot. They go straight there. They put in the request. And within just a 24-hour turnaround, they have the letter back. It's been such an enabler for them. They're used to getting things done in real time. And it's given so much time back to the HR business partner. They can now go back to the, the work that really matters, right? Yes. And, and it's more strategic yeah. versus these kind of transactional engagements yeah. that used to bog down our organization. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to integrate as much technology as we can through all of our platforms to help enable our employees. So whether they're on the go or in front of their, their mm -hmm. desk. I mean, the bot sounds great, actually, but I can sort of tie that back to some of the more cynical doom and gloom forecasts I've been seeing about, you know, new disruptive technologies, you know, like, oh, Southeast Asia is going to lose millions of jobs in the next 10 years because of, you know, bots and things like that. On the other hand, you know, I, I, I see what you're saying because it's, it's freeing us up to do higher level stuff. So, and I've seen forecasts that say, hey, 
we're going to have another million jobs in Southeast Asia by 2025 because of all these higher level tasks that need to be done. So it seems to me there are going to be jobs. They're just going to be different jobs. Um, so I'm kind of wondering how can we as business leaders, as HR leaders, as organizations, how can we help our employees you know, keep up with these new different jobs, but also um, you know, have that continuous learning mindset to be agile enough to be able to keep up with these changes? Mm -hmm. If either of you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, let, let me tackle the first one. How do we continue to prepare the workforce so we do not become obsolete, right? And to me, that's something that's key to our people vision in Port Singapore because uh, we recognize that we need to change. We need to transform ourselves. We need to continue to move along and move faster. And uh, for us, you know, the focus has been not just to strengthen the competencies, but also, more importantly, to prepare the mindset for change and what we call the growth mindset. And uh, that our employees understand that challenges are okay as long as we learn from it. Uh, you know, and also, we need to encourage people to learn from successes from others and be inspired by that. And also, feedback is food for champions. And, and I think these are things that we are trying to instill in our workforce that we can continue to leverage on each other to learn from one another and from others so that we can continue to move ahead. Now, why is it important? Because in the digital world that we're talking about, in the industrial revolution that we talk about, 4.0, what's important is that there are changes in all dimensions. In my view, no one person can be the expert. Therefore, it's important that as employer, we learn from one another, whether it's from outside or inside. We build partners in communities of uh, practice that can help enable us to get there. Now, what are we trying to do when we do all this is to really build an edge on workforce because the world of the future is not something we can define in one sentence. Therefore, our focus is in building an edge on workforce and what do I mean by Agile? It really literally stands for agility, growth mindset, innovative. We need to have leaders of the future and an engaged workforce, which basically comes back to people. Mm. Yeah, Because people is really the heart of the organization. And with that, we will be able to move along and, and face whatever that comes together and continue to add value to our customers. I mean, yeah. what you're saying, it really sounds like take, tackling it as a mentality and a mindset and not just one specific skill that has to be you know, acquired. Yes. And Melanie, would you agree that that's how you see it? Absolutely. I, I truly believe that this growth mindset culture and the culture work is the most pivotal thing that, that HR and business leaders can focus on as they're implementing a digital transformation in their organization. Yeah. Just going back to the point of uh, continuous learning, one of the things that, that we've really focused on is making sure that our leaders are role modeling the, the mm. kind of continuous learning we're also expecting from our workforce. So yeah. even earlier this week, our head of uh, global HR sent an email out to you know, a thousand HR employees saying, this is how I'm actually blocking the time in my in my diary to spend the time on a MOOC. So this is a, a massive open online course and we have them on offer through through our Microsoft learning platform and really focusing uh, his time and his attention and blocking out his days and role modeling the, the mm. kind of continuous learner mindset and, yeah. and actions that are really going to be necessary for all of us to keep up with the pace of change. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it really sounds like I think, you know, um, setting the example is really yeah. going to be crucial to this. So I guess on that note, maybe each of you could share a parting thought about HR's continuing role in enabling and sort of pushing trans and driving transformation, really. Well, for me, we have to be the eternal optimist. Uh, my, my view is that as HR, we should be ready to be the change agent. You know, and more importantly, continue to focus on preparing the workforce for the future. And agile workforce is key. And also remember that we cannot do this alone. So leverage on the partners out there uh, to help us enable that. And more importantly is not to stay in our comfort zone. 
the way to add value is to move forward. Move forward with times, move forward with technology, move forward with the opportunities that are available. It can be daunting, but to me, managing change is part and parcel of our, our lives too. How we deal with digital change around our personal lives. So to me, my encouragement to my leaders and employees is that if you can do it at home, you can do it at work for sure. Yes, that's great. Yeah, I mean, change is not going to go away. So yes. you know, it's get on board or just not be around. Yeah. <laughs> and I think our, one of the key roles that we can play yeah. is encouraging our leaders and employees to, to, to really understand how difficult change is. And us having empathy for the experience and really being able to relate to, yeah. to one another in an authentic, open way yes. is hugely important. So we're really focused on our leader education and manager education around creating psychological safety and trusting teams. It's only there where you can bring out that inclusive mm -hmm. environment and truly allow people to process uh, uh, thoughtfully mm -hmm. about the change that they're going through because everyone is going to be at a different point yeah. in their own change uh, journey. So the more empathy that we can yes. have towards one another uh, yes. will foster that inclusive environment. I think that's a really lovely and fantastic note to sort of end things on, you know, sort of keeping the human in HR, yes. even as technology is sort of taking over the future of work, you know, we've got to remember that that's what we're here for, right? Yes. So I guess on that note, I want to thank you both very much for joining us today. And also thank you to everyone across Southeast Asia who's been watching us. Uh, have a great day ahead. Thank you. Journey. Talking about future ready jobs and future ready skills. In a world where technology skills are in demand and digital transformation is just right around the corner in the industry, all companies and different organizations are becoming and wanting to be technology-focused companies. What does that mean? It means like when you talk about finance industry, banking, healthcare, research, manufacturing, energy, telecommunications, information technology services, among those things, including the education or public sector. All these organizations that revolves all those industries. Nowadays, it's not about you will only learn technology skills or future ready skills because your work in technology companies such as Microsoft or Google or Apple, but now if you work in a different sector or non-tech, since everyone wants to be tech focused, everyone is undergoing digital transformation. Everyone needs to upskill and reskill in the digital talent space. And part of that are these technology future ready jobs and future ready skills. Because of these new technologies in the landscape, new jobs are being reinvented. Artificial intelligence, DevOps, data science, big data, among those others. In the Philippines, or in India perhaps, everyone knows about the business process outsourcing and the uh, information technology outsourcing industry is, is very huge, quite huge in those countries. But it doesn't mean that if you work on those sector and they encounter artificial intelligence opportunities, everyone should be threatened on those technologies. Nowadays, actually, it's an opportunity being perceived by those industries because it's an opportunity to learn everyone, an opportunity to upskill and reskill the workforce of those industries. In CloudSwift, we provided and we built together with Microsoft as a partner an end-to-end -end solution to provide that future ready skills learning platform solution that has that platform, hundreds of content, certifications, and hands-on labs. In human capital development, it is very important for us to embrace the modern future ready skills that is geared towards those jobs that are reinvented. And that will just go along across the industry worldwide. Microsoft and its partners are at the forefront of serving and providing and adding more value in those solutions.
And that is why it is very important for us to share our knowledge, to share these opportunities and these innovations that can be revolved around future ready skills, future ready jobs. Again, thank you. My name is Dan Angelo de Guzman of CloudSwift, and I've heard and I'm hoping and I'm hoping that you've learned something. Thank you and have a good day. I'm Microsoft 365 Education, Product Marketing Lead of Microsoft Asia Pacific. We recently completed a key piece of research on the class of 2030. This sounds very far out, but the students are today's kindergartens. They are sitting in the classroom today and will graduate into a world that is changing faster than ever. That generation will face challenges we can't even imagine today. They will learn to engage with each other with technology with information that is entirely in new ways. They will study university courses that not, might not even exist today and enter the workforce that would be transformed by automation. So we set out to understand what kind of skills the class of 2030 would need, how best to prepare them through their educational journey and promising role that technology can play to enable that. In constructing this, Research, we listened to 70 global thought leaders around the world. We reviewed 150 pieces of existing research and conducted a survey of 2,000 teachers as well as 2,000 students across four countries. More important, we focus on our subjects, the young people who make up the class of 2030 and those closest to understanding their world. We wanted to know what are their aspirations experiences and expectations. As for the findings, the main theme was student centricity, a focus on learners and learning and approaches like personalized learning, which supports skills development, both cognitive and non-cognitive. The students were clear. They want to develop the skills to navigate their own learning, to explore and make their own choices that unlock their curiosity and potential. They want the teachers who know to understand them as individuals. This generation expects to have a voice that they can expect to be heard and be able to direct and navigate their own learning. Within the context of the student centricity, we found two core teams, social and emotional skills, and the second one would be personalized learning. In the future, how we interact with each other matters. What we found out is the future of learning, work, and life is profoundly social. The strongest signal of our study was the need to develop and apply social and emotional skills. While certainly not new in education, these skills are newly important to more people and are taking the center stage alongside deeper cognitive and content. Knowledge in the classroom is key and important as well. They will set key skills across all the aspects of life. Being smart enough to get into college or university is not enough. In fact, social and emotional skills are two times more predictive of a student's academic achievement than their home environment or even demographic. Students we survey understand the importance of the skills, with 50% of them including this particular thing in their top five priorities for education. And of course, science backs it up. Neuroscientists know that emotion is the gatekeeper of cognition, so social and emotional skills are the fundamental portion of all our learning. This is very critical for the, work, for the workplace. 30 to 40% of jobs in growth industries will require explicit and social emotional skills moving forward. So as we look into the class of 2030, this might be the most human generation of workers yet. To prepare for this, we need to provide them with tools. 
that would be enabled to promote and develop their social and emotional skills. As we heard from educators throughout our journey, that some of the biggest pain points are simply just managing efficient classroom collaboration in the way that both the teacher and the students will be encouraged to use. Microsoft Teams brings forward these features, you know, and hopefully already using like assignments and class notebooks into one digital hub. So you can save time on everyday logistics and actually focus on promoting collaboration in the classroom even more. We saw an opportunity to create a space that engages the voice within every student. One that helps them build communication and collaboration skills they'll need to be successful in the future. Microsoft Teams delivers on four core promises to create the digital workspace of a high-performing classroom. The first one, Microsoft Teams solves for communication, the needs of diverse school environment, and it has evolved into complete, a complete classroom collaboration tool chat, voice, video. You can also use Microsoft Teams for informal mentoring or even group chats directly on your phone if you're on the go. Or if you have an open conversation in the classroom ch with chat channels. This enables teachers and students to share information in a very transparent way to facilitate learning. And you know, it's super easy to set up the digital classroom in cases that being physically present in the classroom is not possible. Second, when it comes to collaboration, the deep office integration enables the, today's multi-generational school environment to use office apps that they are familiar with and truly love, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, SharePoint Planner, and even Power BI, right within the context of the, of the Teams Hub. As we avoid to actually put in a lot of email attachment and having to search through the latest version of the document, teachers no longer to scan through their emails and note down who has submitted their assignments. Teams brings all Office 365 services to get it together, monitor students submitting their assignments while the teacher can just track the submission real time and easily integrate a, uh, a scoring rubric. Third, while Every class is unique. One thing that is consistent in every teacher is the need of a variety of apps and tools that the class be more involved. Teams offers an extensible platform that allows a personalized experience to get class work done better, more efficiently, and more transparently. You can customize the workspace itself by pinning important files, apps, in, or dashboard in top of each other, in, uh, in top of the channel for easy reference. Infusing Teams with applications you use every day allows you to better leverage on the apps tools you love, giving you access to the information you need right in the context of the Teams Hub. Finally, Teams provides industry leading security and compliance, and of course, reach management capabilities as well. Our mission talks about empowering every person to achieve more and guiding us through the journey of the modern classroom. Just remember the four C's, communicate, collaborate, customize and extend, and compliance and security. The link to the class of 2030 research, as well as further information on Microsoft Teams can be seen at the resource page. Please join me in this journey of the modern classroom. Thank you.